Greetings. We are in the uh, my storage room, and I just took one of these. I'm working on a new project, and uh, I've got this brick here. Okay, I got it from a mushroom guy named Kevin, real good guy. And basically, um, I put I put it. I want to see how much it expands to. It's hardwood used in mushroom growing. And so this is what I had, and I put it in this uh, plastic container here a few minutes ago, and I've been putting some water in it, and it's, I wanted to see what it would expand to. So, as you can see, it's absorbing water like crazy. This is what it was, and then this is like double the size in a couple minutes. And so I have a bunch of water that I've been keeping in a pail here, in a trash, not a trash thing, but just a, and so I'm just pouring water on it, and I want to see what it expands to. I didn't want to just put it in a five gallon bucket and have it break the bucket. So, this is what we're gonna use for the mushroom substrate. And if all goes well, that will be in there and have about three inches deep in that plastic container of uh, of sawdust, hardwood sawdust. Can't be softwood so so sawdust because it doesn't like pine. It wants hardwood sawdust. And so here's what the deal was, is that this guy named Kevin, real sweetheart, he um, gave me a bunch of spent mushroom bags, 14 of them to be exact, all sorts of different kinds. And then we've got some uh, lion's mane. and So a lot of that's going to go around the yard. And I got for 12 bucks plus about 2 or $3 for shipping, I got a little thing of wine cap mushrooms, uh, some spawn and so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to see if I can extend, do what they call bulk spawn, where you basically buy spawn and you give it more material to grow in. And then um, before you put it out for fruiting. So that's what the idea is here, is that we're going to um, get uh, that thing to be as big as possible. At the same time, I don't want to get it so saturated that it gets overly moist. But as you can see, that thing's absorbing a lot of water, you know. Here's the brick that it was, so it's more than twice the size in a few minutes, five minutes of exposure to water. And we'll see what happens. Um, Real curious is to see how big that will get. Next time I'll probably do it in a five gallon bucket, but I just didn't want to break it. So in any event, that's the, the beginning of this project, is that we're going to um, make a substrate and, and put the, the spawn in there and make it expand so it has more. And then once it grows more, then I'll put that out in the garden and grow wine caps in the shade in an area in a place that's covered with plants so that during the warm heat of the Arizona summer it um, doesn't uh, doesn't get too warm so but in this room here this is kind of a storage room I haven't really been using a work a workshop it's got a sunroof it's got a window some amp so there is ambient light in here this is actually a pretty good mushroom room and I'm only growing stuff that, uh, I don't, a lot of this is, all of this is going into the yard, one way or another. But I'm going to see if maybe I can revive some of the mycelium in some of the bags. Wouldn't that be cool to have lion's mane growing in somewhere around the yard or in the house or in here? And then there's pearl and some of these bags are got stuff written on them and I have to talk to Kevin about and say, what are these? But in any event, that's the, that's the project, and we'll get back to you on this, okay?
Okay. Um, here's where it is right now. I've got the uh, hardwood sawdust. This was just one brick. Filled up a nice little tub. You want to keep it moist but not wet. And it seemed like the right number of ladles. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a little bit of gypsum. Here we go. And probably about two heaping tablespoons. And then I'm going to put it here a little bit, sprinkle it around. Apparently uh, mycelium likes the calcium involved. And then we'll stir that up nicely. Calcium and phosphorus and uh, And it also is supposed to be good for helping to keep things from clinging. So if we were using wheat berries or rye berries, they put um, gypsum. It seems kind of ironic or awfully convenient that when they, when you have gypsum in your walls, it's a absolutely wonderful mold food. You'd think they would come up with something that was less less hardy for the mold for the, for mold but in any event we're and then here's the here's the idea is that instead of putting tape along the bottom or doing something um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove I'm going to move some of this uh, dirt and wood chips aside and I'm going to cover the sides of it because if you don't make it really dark on the sides, it starts pinning on the ins on, because it likes microclimates on the inside of the tub. So it'll dark instead of putting tape or doing something with a liner, I'm just going to darken it from the outside using the um, the wood chips and the dirt. And I'm just going to leave, I'm just going to let it do its thing there. I'm going to put in the uh, the spawn. And then later on, when it's completed, it'll already know what this area is like from having grown here. Then I'm going to put it in the bed here along the wall. In this part of the yard, it gets in the shade most of the time. It gets a little morning light, but this is pretty, pretty very little, especially with a lot of broccoli and stuff here. Now over here, there'll be other... It might make its way over here, but as it goes into the summer, it'll get way too darn hot. But I'll put it against the wall because apparently it likes climate, um, it likes microcultures against edges. So I've got a lot of opportunity here. And then this of course is area where I'm trying to get some sprouts going for, uh, ooh, something's coming up. Woohoo! You saw it here first. So we got, uh, ashwagandha in that row along with uh oh that's cool yeah some ashwagandha that's ashwagandha right there that those little stuff that's cool first sign of sprouts so in any event let's get back to the mushroom project all right so here's the idea so far is that the whole thing is going to be about three inches deep. I saw a, a really good YouTube channel called Willie Myco. Willie and then M-Y-C-O, all one word. And so he said do it three inches. So what I have in a little bag, um, let me show you what I got there. You can look at me while I'm looking. There we go. So for um, Eleven ninety five plus shipping. I got this little bag over the internet. I put, I opened it up earlier. Not the actual mycelium, the spawn material, but the uh, just the envelope, and it really stinks of. Um, 
mushroom, like you would smell mold if you went into a house. So I really recommend having a, a bag ready, but this is what it looks like. I got it from a company called Unis Corp. U-N-I-S-C-O-R-P. And I bought it off the off of eBay. I didn't want to spend... You know, I love Paul Stamet, Stamet and fungi and stuff, but it would have cost me like 20 bucks or so for the four-pound bag and then another 20-plus to mail it. And I really didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. So I ended up... Um, just spending $11 for a lot less. That's like two ounces. And that's like one, one eighth of a pound. So this is significantly less than what you would get. So it's nowhere near comparison, you know, in comparison to what I would have got from the Paul Stamet, Stamet company. But I really didn't want to spend more than $15 for this experiment. And that, that other one, I would have been out 40, even though it would have been four pounds significantly, you know, eight probably about 40 times the amount of volume. So that's what we're doing here today is we're trying to increase the volume. So by watching the Woolly Myco program, we're going to spread this, half of this on this half. Then I'm going to move this half of this tub back over here. And then I'm going to actually move everything but a half inch. Then I'll put this other half on there and then cover it with the pile that's over here. So... That's the idea, and uh, let's watch that happen if that's possible. All right, look at this. I'm wearing this head-mounted bouncing thing, so sorry about the bouncing. But here's what we're going to do: is we're going to open this thing. Let's break. We'll, we'll break it up a little bit. So that we can distribute it later. So we want to only get about half on this side. And I'm only going to do one layer because I don't have much to work with. So here's what we're going to do. Open this baby up. Pinch it there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to spread that out. And I've got these latex gloves on. Because I really, um, these spores aren't something you want to bring in the house with you. And just even opening the bag, I find a little problematic in the house. Don't st you don't want mold in your house. So we're going to break things up a bit. And I'm going to try to extend. This is called bulk. Nothing. I mean, there's. We're not trying to fruit off of this. Remember, we're only use. We're only doing this to create extra spawning material. And I'm putting absolutely no nutrients in here. Kevin, the mushroom guy, that's at the Phoenix Uptown Farmers Market. He said, "Don't put any nutrients in it. The sawdust should be enough just to grow the spawn, and then." We can worry about it colonizing later in the garden. But right now I just want to get enough contact points. All right, well that's pretty good. So now we're going to move half of this just to cover it. Well, that's pretty cool. All right, and then we'll put that aside. And actually, we'll move half of this over so that it's the same level as the other one. And this stuff is moist, but it's not wet, okay? And I got it packed in the corners there. And make sure that we get to that halfway point there. All right. And so now we're going to distribute this other half.
Might as well get it all. Okay. And then we will... You know, if you ever go to the Cannes Film Festival, they say shake with your right and eat with your left so that you don't get contaminated, you don't get the flu or whatever. In this case, I am shredding with my left and moving the mycelium contact points around. Creating more opportunities. And it's away from the side, so when I see it actually get to the side. All right, that's looking pretty good. Not a whole lot to work with there, but that's the whole idea is making bulk, is to make more from the small amount that you got. So we'll cover that up with this moist sawdust. And now it can live another day. I'm not really packing it down, I'm just kind of making it uniform. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So this next step is to put some aluminum on things. Now I'm going to take off these gloves because I'm not going to be touching this stuff anymore. We've got our gypsum in there. We've got our King Strafaria wine cap spawn in there. And now we're going to cover this whole thing with aluminum foil. And like I say, I don't, I don't need to get spores on my aluminum foil because I guess no need to be cheap about it. Well, we'll just do half of it this go around. And remember, it's going to have condensation and evaporation. So, what we want to do is make sure that. Um, The thing captures the moisture so we don't have to really add any for a while. All right, that's pretty good. What did I do with my little screwdriver? Huh. All right, we're going to take the tip of the scissors here. I'm going to make five holes. One, two, three, four, five. And I probably get some tape and tape this. But the next thing you'll see me do is place it in the garden, okay? You, I think you can understand that I'll put a little tape there just to keep that from moving around uh, and getting unau or unauthorized air in there. So next step is making room for it in the garden. And I talked to you about that already, so just a little bit. All right. Let's not give any companies any bonus points there. All right. So here's what we're doing. We're, we've got this right here, and we're going to take that shut. Just to keep it from Sorry, that's a little overkill. But 
I really don't want any garden weird mold spores getting in there. All right. So that's pretty good. We got our holes. One, two. Did we cover that one? Let's make another one just because I think I covered that one. There we go. All right. So the next step is to make something big enough for this over in the garden space. All right. So here we are making room for it. And it's close to where it eventually will go. But the goal here is to level it out as much as possible. And then afterwards, so let's go get it and see how that works. Not too bad for eyeballing it. All right, so here's what we're gonna do, is we wanna cover the first three inches, just as far as the soil goes. And the reason why that is, is that if it's dark, then it won't pin. Pinning is bad. Pinning is something you don't want on the sides. So I've been told by Willie Myko that don't do it. He used to put, he would put like tape or a, a black bag on the inside liner. But I think with this method, really reducing the need for that and absolutely no waste is that we're going to be covering the sides three inches but um, using the outside material. So I think this is much simpler, as long as there's enough material to go around it. Three inches everywhere. Ooh, there's a little stash. There we go. And actually it'll be, this is the, material it's going to be going in. Whoop. See how easy it is to get outside spores. <sighs> Close. All right, so that's it, guys. So it'll be covered in the little micro environment, and we'll keep checking on it. I may come by and pull off the aluminum foil and mist it from that here and there. But the reason why the holes is because it off gases. Fungi, mycelium is like are they're like people. They breathe. They carbon dioxide, so they have to have a little bit of air come in to replace it. So I'll check on it now and then over the next week and watch how it progresses. But the idea is rather than paying for four pounds of spawn and have it mailed and costing 45 bucks. This $15 method, and Kevin was nice to sell me some sawdust bricks. So, here, let me pull this off. This is the current contraption. How do you like that? Head mounted so that I can work with my hands. Pretty cool. So, this is it. Whoop, got a corner shown. But a little bit of light is important because that's how it, it, it grows and that's what's needed for evaporation. So light sneaking in there is not bad. It's just I wanted to cover up all the sawdust. So 
And then that way I don't have the darn thing in my house. And I don't have to worry about my mycelium and mold spores and fungi spores in the house. So, so that's it. That, that was pretty simple. What do you think? Uh, we'll let you see the progress as it goes along. Take care. See you next time.